Now, recently we posted uh, a bid for support of Africa's Future Corps and Brother Ron Siddiqui first, as well as support for some of the general efforts of uh, Sister Jim Morris and us other Mario of the EWF, Ethiopian World Federation. Now, the main focus of this, as those who have seen the video and hopefully checked out the description and gone to the you know, going to the the, rel the relative websites and websites for the particular project is for supporting um, building of the of a new or renewed temple for the Tabota Eon, for the Ark of the Covenant. Now, one of the comments um, that came in from I think one named Thesis um, Amran Imero um, was very kind of. Um, it almost seems schizophrenic or double-minded, or it might seem like what I call a mystery, um, mystery slam. You know what I'm saying? Mystery, mystery slam. In other words, one will slam the one and say, oh, so-and-so is such and such. And then the Holy Spirit, the Memphis Caduce, reminded me about even some previous um, slander which I and I and I, sister wife, um, Wazero, Tehitin, and Gurma Ansam have um, received you understand from some unknown individuals who have written and posted certain things on the internet saying that Ron Sayadon is Safari and his girlfriend, you know, these the insulting slanders don't, you know, don't stop at the first insult or offense, but and I girlfriend, it's the girl are thieves. Now, when we saw that and we read through it, we would say, okay, if we've stolen something, who did we steal from and what did we steal? You know, and prove your point. What is the evidence about it? And then I remember the scripture, the Mesmora Dawi, like, if it had been an enemy, you know, then I and I could have, like, endured, like, if it was a Gentile or a Goyim or a heathen or a sheathen, you understand? Know but then it reminds I and I in this Torah portion, in this present Torah portion, I want to bring your um, remembrances to, you know, what Torah portion we're in. We're concluding um, the Midbar or the Hebrew book of Numbers, the Hebrew book of Numbers, right? Or the Orit Zechuzquit, or Zechuzquit, right? And in this particular, let's see, sabbatical portion, we had read something, and it was interesting, it's like the Holy Spirit was speaking to I on this particular portion, and I read it, but I, I really didn't recognize at the time what the Holy Spirit was was showing I and I in this particular portion. Let's see if we can get this particular portion. And um, this is speaking to the footnote here. Right, the footnote right here. That is, uh, anyway, speaking on slander, then the Holy Spirit began to like, oh, here, here goes page uh, 421, 421. And then the Spirit began to remind I and I of I and I story, of I and I history of the Metzhaf do so the, you know, the instructions for us, the admonitions for us, as the once laws but now found made to Israel. And it's very interesting, after the commands are given, right, the Ten Commandments, that right after we have a series of what's called um, um, civil um, laws and judgments, you know that the, that the, that the Mosaic Covenant is given in three particular um, divisions. There's three particular parts of it. There is the, the the law of God. That's often called the Ten Commandments. But really, it's the as as alat or the Decalogue. It's the ten words. So really, it's ten like articles or words that make up one command. This is why James the Yaakov teaches in the New Testament that. Um, teaches that if you break one, you break all. You understand? Because it's really one word. It's one holistic word. Now, many were not able to, to live it. They said none were able to live it in the old covenant, but we all are able to live it through our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, in the new covenant, through Getachina, Hanitachina, Jesus Christus. So, we should not be without excuse. But you know the whole Rastaism and Schism and other things, and since there seems to be no king, you know what I'm saying, in Israel, that like it was in the book of um, Judges, 
every man does that which is right in his own eyesight, but it's a period of civil and religious and moral confusion. But here's the good news, that we're coming out of that, because this is after these 40 years. It's an after this particular time and dispensation, and the call for us to be involved you understand know here the diaspora with the reconstruction of a of a temple, a tabernacle for the Ark of the Covenant is something that regardless of whatever other political issues, we all should be able to rally around. But what ones can't overcome is what they can't overcome. They can't overcome this this carnal, this worldly nature until they are born again. And many might grow the dreadlocks and might eat ital and, and burn the herb, so forth and so on, but they're not really studying the word. You know, when they burn the herb and not studying the word, perhaps they can't focus on two of those at one time, so maybe they should need to put down the herb and pick up the word, pick up the teaching of his majesty. But on this point of slander, mm -hmm. on this point of slander, we like to touch on this because According to the Metaph Kedus, and we're going to go through this so that, so that ones and ones will be more familiar with this, and this is what wears down and erodes the harmony. See, it's the enemy that does this, and the enemy that uses unstable um, bread drain and cyst drain to be the, the um, initiators of this. You know, it, all it takes is for one to say, well, so-and-so did such and such. I know it because some some well-known Rosses told me so. There's no evidence to it whatsoever. Now, this is why when the Beta Israel, who are a likeness, a, a foretelling for us in this time, when they came out, they were given a, a moral code. You know what I'm saying? A moral code. Now, when we look at the Old Testament, but we have to understand that the Old Testament is the New Testament um, concealed. And the New Testament in our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Gittach, and Yesus Christos, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. But even in the New Testament, there were these um, admonitions about how we are, you know, and as brothers and sisters, to behave. Some of the basics is in the basic teaching of Gittach, and Yesus Christos that we find, for example, in Matthew, the early chapters of Matthew. Um, we was touching on Matthew chapter 5, which really shows what sort of, um, uh, it begins with the, with the Beatitudes, actually. The Beatitudes are the real constitution for the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven, you can say, but for the kingdom of God, the real constitution, you understand, is that Beatitudes. You understand, if you read the Beatitudes, it tells us what sort of attitude, mm-hmm, Don't worry, we're going to put this down for a moment. What sort of attitude we should have? What sort of attitude that we should have? That's the beatitude, really. And, and when we get that attitude, you know what I'm saying, then we truly are blessed. You know what I'm saying? We're not blessed by our own effort, you understand, know in this world, or how much bling bling, or how much gal, or how much car, or how much herb, or how much this. That's not blessed. You know what I'm saying? That's not blessed for you. We're blessed when we get this new attitude of heart and mind, you know, and, and then the Spirit of God can flow through us, you know, and then all those promises of God the Father and His beloved Son, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, are manifest amongst us. And now, as you already know, we're in that time and space. Remember, they were in a, a level of grace. Mm -hmm. There was a level of grace, right? for, they say, 2,000 or so years. They said judgment is coming. And why is judgment coming? Because the time of grace is coming to its fulfillment. You know what I'm saying? So we should not be lacking about this. So here's, here's the word here from this Torah portion, right? This Torah portion, I think it's, uh, it's, it's in um, Matos, right? The sages, the ancient sages, they taught in a baraita, a particular study, and compilation of wisdom that they honor the memory of the family that baked the temple showbread. They honor that memory of the family that baked the, the temple showbread. For they never allowed fine bread to be found in their children's hands. In other words, they offered first to the temple priests who gave continually day and night, you know what I'm saying, for their service. You understand? And the sages honored the memory of the family that made the temple incense, the temple ishans. 
for they never allowed a bride of the house to go about perfume. Now, they say that this, this, this here, the overstanding is that in both cases, the families did so to fulfill the command that we find in Numbers chapter 32, verse 22, which is this, this double portion, Torah portion, portion of it. it is Numbers 32 and 22, and ye shall be clear before the Lord and before Israel. In other words, be clear before Jah and Rastafari. And this is why we are speaking on this point of slander. And, and true, the Holy Spirit reminded I and I that this comes with the territory. Anyone who's going to speak out, you know what I'm saying, and speak the word of truth and, and really strengthen the brothers and sisters to get in John's way and in the way, the truth, and the life, you understand, that's going to get you enemies from those who are, how can we say, the, 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 the sheep, the, the wolves in sheep clothing. You understand? Know there's the tears and there's the tears. Let's understand that. Now, the understanding is that the meaning is that the people should act so as to avoid even the appearance of transgression. So ones are accusing I and I and I sister wife of, of thievery, of thievery, of stealing. You understand? Know well, of course one says it could be, right? But where's the evidence? You mean someone can make a statement like this and back it up by only that they have high-ranking members in the EWF and in this and that who know about this and that, no names, no, no evidence. Even when we were appointed through the legitimate authority of Dr. Gladstone Robinson, you understand, as you can say, co of attorneys and as co-administrators, because his authority from all the evidence, Ethiopian, American, from all sides, is right and exact whether ones want to admit it or not. And this is not to dismiss Brother Solomon Wool's authority that he was given. You know, simply have to remember that Jamaica did not have a, 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 an embassy in Ethiopia, and the British was running also the backdoor tricks to have Ethiopia basically tell the Jamaicans that no, there was no land there, and no, Ethiopia wouldn't accept them, but Ethiopia remained firm in that. So therefore, Solomon Wolf was appointed for his community and for his people because they did not have that link that although they were related with the Federation, there was some Federation down there, we have to recognize the jurisdiction of the Anglo and the Americans. So this did not, this does not do away with Dr. Gladstone Robinson's authority. And even we have interview upon interview with Robinson, Dr. Robinson, um, who now may John have mercy in his soul, yet return to the spirit world, you know, to the bosom of Abraham, that he, while he lived, he bore witness to this. And we have those films, you understand, know, those interviews that really show it. And for a man who was up in his 70s, so forth and so on, he was sharp, he was on point. And besides that, he had evidence, you understand, know, documentation in English, in Amharic, you understand, and with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the, the gift of tongues and languages, I now was able to read it, and whatever I didn't understand, I could ask my sister wife, oh, what's this, is this such and such, just to confirm, verify, you understand, and when we came forward to make certain, um, not charges, but really to warn the brothers and sisters who were doing different activities in the Federation between the years of 2003 and roughly 07, 08, the Ethiopian New Millennium. Whenever we made a statement about a local or a group of individuals is based on having their names on certain records and having the evidence and showing them the evidence. So when we put this forward, the old sense of the various different locals and everything, they pushed I and I out. You know what I'm saying? But Josh says, that's all right. You know what I'm saying? That's all right. This has happened to I and I beloved even in foregone days and ages. That's all right. You know what I'm saying? But when we were there and we bore witness, we had the evidence. And you know there was two types of reactions. Among some brothers and sisters, they were like, oh, wow, this is so correct. This is so right and exact that we were told to do it like this or we just did it like this. So different ones, the situation was different. But many of them sought to rectify you understand what they were doing, you understand, against the, the parent entity of the EWS. You understand? Now, there were others who we had even more evidence on, and you know what they did? 
They basically just argued that we had no authority, that we had no right, who are we, even argue that Robinson, Dr. Gladstone Robinson had no authority, even to basically try to state that he was illegitimate, even though their ancestors, Robinson's own age, was not involved in the Federation, so forth and so on. So from the Afro-American side, you know, and true, we were duly, you understand, honored, you know, and to have one such as Dr. Gladstone Robinson, and so far, no amount of evidence that we have seen, you understand, proves anything other than a man who, with limited resources and limited support from others, still try to hold the banner and hold the flag. Now, this is the tribal thing between Binyam and, 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 and Yehuda. You understand? Well, Yehuda yik them. It's your ticket If you understand what that means, then so be it. You know what I'm saying? But if this is something about, you know, we need to get our house in order, and make I and I get I and our house in order, because this word here came to I again. You shall be clear before the Lord, before Yahweh, and before Israel, meaning that people should act so as to avoid even the appearance of transgression. You know what I'm The appearance of impropriety. So ones and ones are slandering I and I good name. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and even if we were wrong or we did something wrong, present the evidence. You see, that's what we call it, mystery slander and mystery slanderers. You know what I'm saying? Because all they have to do, especially for people such as us, some of us are born again, many of us need to be born again. It's easy for us to believe that sort of stuff because this is, we live in a world of make-believe. So all one has to do is say it and say, well, I'm in an authoritative position. You understand? Because I got family, I got connections, so forth and so on. But what we suspect is that some of the people who we basically proved it to, instead of acknowledging and confessing and making amends for what they were doing, you know, it's like they say, slay the messenger. You understand? But if job before I and I, you understand? Who can be against I and I? Because every weapon that is formed against I and I, you understand? Every, it, it, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, and every tongue that shall rise up in the judgment shall be condemned. You understand? There's no weapon that can form again, be, be formed against I and I. Because this is their heritage. This is our divine heritage as servants. You understand? As servants. Most of the things that we're teaching and showing ones and ones, all praise be to Jah, we already know. You understand? I mean, we already know it ourselves. We can say we'll keep this to ourselves, but no. That's not how I and I move in the new birth. That's not the example that we see of this imperial majesty. But slander, my brothers and sisters, slander. Isn't this what the Israelites did, what some of the spies did? They had slandered, you know what I'm saying? They had slandered even the true witness of what was going on. And they caused more than 2 million people to wander and die 40 years in the wilderness. So let's look at this right here. Because it's very serious that we're talking about our Ethiopian order of things. Right? Let's look right here into Exodus. Exodus chapter 23. And it's interesting, if you have a Schofield Bible, you will see that it's broken down into different, into different um, sort of uh, categories, right? Uh, when you go to chapter 21, it's the law, it's the judgments of master and servant. Then it goes on to the judgments, injuries to, to the person, if you injure a person. Right? Then in chapter 22, it goes through the law, the judgment, the rights of property, the rights of property, right? This is our constitution before the constitution. This is our divine heritage, all right? The law, the judgment, and it says crimes against humanity, crimes against humanity from chapter 22 of Exodus, Exodus 22 and 16, all the way till we get to Exodus 23 and 10, where it goes to the law, the judgment of the land and of the Sabbath. Do you not know that when we get our land, our inheritance land, the land must keep its, its, its Sabbath, its Shabbat. That the people, one of the reasons why the Israelites went into captivity wasn't so much as the false gods and idols that some of the people were off worshiping and deceiving others into worshiping, but the Bible says, for 70 or so years will they be in captivity. So now the land will enjoy her Sabbaths, her Shabbats. Now scientifically, you can check out some of the Jews and the Israelis. They've been studying how John's law actually is sustainable and holistic. So if it's sustainable and holistic for the land, you understand, and for, and for the other things that are created and exist, how much more for I and I and the brotherhood and the sisterhood? 
You see, this is one of the reasons why the trust, you know what I'm saying, and the faithfulness in the community has so eroded, you know what I'm saying? And it's a trick, a lie of the enemy. Now, if I or if any have done something that's untoward, John's word gives us the proper order of resolution. But you hear a lot of folks say, well, me a bad boy, me I deal with it like this or like that. I love the last thing. No, you don't. You know what I'm saying? And it's a big judgment for you if you don't repent and reform your ways. Because John gives us that, you know what I'm saying, how to go about, you know, how to go about if your brother offends against you. What should you do? You understand the steps that one should take individually, you understand, and in community. You understand, and in community to resolve these sort of issues. And, and they're very important, you understand, to our walk, to our blessing. You understand, no amount of hard work is on get ones what John say that he already has for ones that fulfill, you understand, that fulfill his will. So it, it tells us how to go about, you understand, how to go about such in such situations, you understand, if your brother offends you, if you can go one-on-one -on -one and reason with him and show him, yo, bro, this is what, how you offended me, you understand, so forth and so on. But you can only do that in the spirit of Christ, of, of Christos, you understand, and only going to be in that spirit, that spirit going to be in you, you understand, it's except John at his word, the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. This is not no joke and this is not no game. You understand what we're speaking about here? This is, this is this is real. This is real life. I and I minister to countless numbers. Well, not countless, but it must be in the hundreds of prisoners right now, Rastafari prisoners. And it's interesting because some of them might be like some of y'all. They think, oh, this is a scheme. This is a game. This is a gimmick. All that Bible, Bible, Bible stuff, so forth and so on. Until you get in that situation and you find that it's only ones and ones like I and I. You understand? In, in, in other words, that in John have your back. You understand? When you're incarcerated. You understand? When now you're under somebody else's so called rules and regulations and you want to keep to your liberty. You understand? You want to keep growing in His Majesty. And they say, well, you don't got no rights. And they say, well, contact who is in your community. Who are you going to get to contact? And it's not to point any finger at any other mansion. Because some of them, in different ways, have, have done what they could. You understand? To, to whatever level. It's not to point at this one and that one. Although there's others amongst them who probably have not or probably have, have had no example of how we're supposed to function as a family. So right here, there's a lot to this, but I'm going to go to Exodus chapter 32, uh, uh, excuse me, Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23, it says, Thou, that means you and I, or I and I, shall not raise a false report should not raise a false report. One said that when we were exposing some of the things going on in the Federation, they said that this was, you know, they didn't like it. They said it's not true. But we were showing the evidence, and we said this. If, if this evidence that we have is not true, then say it's not true and show whatever proof you have. Because we did not just say, well, because we don't like this one, or this one is not part of our clique, or this one is not part of our um, tribe in the diaspora, therefore we're going to come out against them. We, we didn't go about it like that. You understand? John did not raise I and I. You understand? From the dead, you know, from being like the dead ones to the real good news of his majesty to go about, you understand, ministering or handling this word. This is not no joke. You understand? This is not no game. You understand? Let's, let's understand that. You could do a lot of other things with yourself. If, you, if you're interested in this word, it's because there's something in you that knows it wants the truth. So, you know, open your book. Open your Bible, get your pen and paper, and begin to study. You saying begin to grow. You saying begin to pray to the Abba, pray to our Father in the name of Jesus Christos. In other words, get your spiritual house in the right order individually. There's an individual responsibility because too much of this tail bearing, this slandering going on. You understand? And then when you ask them, well, what's the evidence? You say I'm a thief. Well, what did I steal? Then you think about it for a moment. If you think about it for a moment, it says right here, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not, put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous wit witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Well, all the crowd is doing that. But John said not to follow a multitude. You hear this, that dreads or whatever like that, if you know that it's not based on his way, his truth, and his life. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. This, and this is what this um, individual, um, Joseph Grant, and, and, you know, whether you know him, I think he's a magician or whatever like that. Listen, 
he doesn't know that he might have been given misinformation because in what he put forward, there was no information. He said that because we had an organization, Line of Judah. Line of Judah was there, you know, as a fraternity and a sorority to greet Ross to God's king and to provide a platform and a space on two occasions for the Ethiopian World Federation work and the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahido Beta Christian work to be done in this Brooklyn, Broke Kings region. You understand, in the 1990s, early 1990s, 91 and 92. You understand, it wasn't just I, but I was a leading brethren of that particular spear, spearhead. You understand, so ones really need to check out, you understand, what they are saying. Check out what they're doing. Be, be careful with this. You understand, because you are seeking to speak in the cause to decline after many, to go after many, to rest, to wrestle with judgment. Right? Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. So some will say, well, he don't have what I got. You understand? And look, see, John's blessing me, and he don't have that, so he's not blessed. John says not. He says, neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. And it goes on to say that if thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, right, even if it's your enemy within the community, it's like the turn of the other cheek, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. So even if you and that brethren don't really, you know, spar or whatever, if you see his thing that is missing, you give it back to him. You know, it don't matter what you feel. It's not about your feelings. You know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's, it's not about I and I feelings on that, on that sort of level. In fact, those are things that we have to give up. That's part of the old man feeling. We have to get the new man and Christos feeling. You know what I'm saying? If thou, yes, if thou, it says, if thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden, and would it forbid to help him? If you see your brother in dealing with something and, you know, and it's too heavy for him and you're like, I'm not going to help that man. What does the word say? The word says, thou shalt surely help with him. Thou shalt surely assist him. It's like when we say, Bob Marley said, puss and dog can get together. What's wrong with you, my brother? Bob learned that when, when, when he was baptized and began to recognize the fullness of this way. It is perfected in Yeshua. It's perfected in Gita Chini Yes Christ. So it wasn't so much the church per se, you know, but that was the best church, you know, saying, for his soul. It says, Keep thee far from a false matter. To this very day, one have not proven that what we accuse one of of, of some something within the Federation that we did not provide proof. I mean we I mean the printing course for the documentation, you know, and that came out of our personal you know, our own funds, just to make sure everybody had the evidence to look over it. And we didn't assume, well, well, this one is wrong, so we're not going to show them. You should know what No, this is the evidence. That's the way God does business. That's the way the king does his business, right? Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay not. Well, well, slay thou not. It's like one saying, yo, let me kill that man. You, you better watch that, because there's angels that you see, and there's ones you don't see. you got to watch those sort of things. You know what I'm saying? Get yourself right with his majesty. And if you do have a cause, if you do say, well, I think something's going wrong, get your evidence and present your evidence. If one presents evidence and say, Ross, I Adonis, uh, I think you're doing something wrong, you're stealing, you're doing this, you're thief, thief, you know, like this is the cause of magic, labor, 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 right? Um, but you're like Labor Day, right? But anyway, you present it. You know what I'm saying? Either I will admit and say, yes, this is true, and repent and restore, you know what I'm saying? Or I'll prove to you how that's false evidence. You know what I'm saying? One way or the other. But when one doesn't present you evidence, you know, so it's just like slander your name. And the Ethiopians have a, have a name for that. You know, like um, 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 neck. You know, that's like, that's like an honor. You're touching somebody's honor. You're touching somebody's glory. You know what I'm saying? That you took some, and, and that's taken to be very serious because the whole foundation, you know what I'm saying, of true Ethiopian nobility and then monarchy, you know what I'm saying, and the aristocracy is on honor. You know what I'm saying? So my brethren, Joseph, Grant, or whoever, if there's something that we're doing, make I and I reason. You know what I'm saying? And get your evidence. But otherwise, repent and recant those things. You know, not for I and I's sake, for Rastafari's sake, because you're saying something and you're not even allowing one an opportunity to rebut it. You're just saying, well, this is because of what I think and what I've heard, so forth and so on. And hear how John says, keep thee far from a false man. It don't matter if it's your family, your bloody, your, 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 your fleshy, you understand, brothers and sisters, they keep far from it. You understand? Know In fact, one cannot value 
um, family carnal relations on the same level as irithical relations. Let's understand that. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not. For I will not justify the wicked, and thou shalt take no gift like a bride. You understand? For the gift blindeth the wise. So they're wise once they start taking gifts and perverted the words of the righteous. It perverts the word. That's why they can't speak this ministry, and they're not about John's works. You understand? Because they're receiving bribes to go around and lie on people, and they might not even know, you understand, whose who's work they're doing. They're not doing our Father's work. Verse 9, it says, Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger. You understand? So if I'm a African American, a Yadi, and you are, and you are, uh, uh, um, or if I'm a Yankee and you're a Yadi, so to speak, it, what? What is that all about? I mean, I mean, come on, let's let, let, let's get with it. You know what I'm saying? So we have to remember how they have divided us. You know what I'm saying? And the only way to overcome that is truly to be born again. I mean, in spirit and in truth, take these words to heart, to mind, to consciousness. You know what I'm saying? Admit in them. Don't allow these little seeds and weeds of the devil to sow tears in your consciousness. Right? Also, thou should not oppress a stranger. For ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. You understand? So we're not to oppress even a stranger among Sinai. This comes under crimes against humanity. You understand? Um, Exodus Torah chapter 23, we read from verse 1 to 9. If we still have an opportunity in this reasoning right here, we want to enter into exhibit. You understand? Um, his imperial magic, Adamawi, Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie is the first, is, um, he would say, Na, Ya Ethiopia, Erinja. We would like to enter this into evidence. You understand? Enter this into evidence. So, right here, we're going to go to his, um, his majesty's mechanism, his preface, right? The preface, right, of his imperial majesty. And this is what he says in the preface. He says, A house built on granite and strong foundations. Not even the onslaught of pouring rain, gushing torrents, and strong winds will be able to pull down. Some people have written the story of my life, representing as truth what in fact derives from ignorance, error, or envy. But they cannot shake the truth from its place, even if they attempt to make others believe it. Now, it's interesting because at the, at the, the footnote down here, the footer is by the late um, Edward Uhlendorf, right? And he wrote down here, I am not clear what works available in 1936-7 the emperor, Nagusat Nagas, had in mind. It should be recalled that at the time of writing, which was 36 years before the book or this book appeared in print in Amharic, the emperor, Nagusa Nagas, was only 44, 45 years of age. He's only 44 years of age, right? So his majesty was saying, and he, he, here he's quoting, and um, he is, he is you say, paraphrasing, in a sense, the Gospels. You understand? Where Christ said that a man who hears his word and does it and builds on that is a wise man, and when the, when the rains and the storms come against his life, you understand, his house will stand firm. But then it's saying that the one who hears these words but doesn't act on them, doesn't do them. So it's showing that when we hear these words, we're supposed to act on them and do them, but really pray and study and meditate it, you understand, so we get it in our soul. You understand, like David says, we hide these words. we got to hide these words in our soul. You know, there's a lot of other verses also that are contained both in the teaching of His Majesty, and we could touch on this, in the Amharic, but it's very important that we kind of just cipher this, you know, cipher this particular reasoning on um, tail bearing. You know, this is why the basic studies are Torah, the daily studies are, are the Psalms of David, as well as reading the Proverbs. The Proverbs tell us that it's the Word, the power of life and death is in the Word. You understand? So watch how you, if you're slandering someone's name. You understand? If you're slandering someone's work because you believe or you think so, or maybe somebody else did this to somebody else or to you, so now you're saying, well, this person is doing that, 
you, you have to be very, very careful about that because it's a whole, even just a psychical level of it. You know what I'm saying? So if you do this to someone who's innocent, you know what I'm saying? And then you need God to strengthen you and to do certain things for you or for your loved ones. And after now you ruin, in other words, somebody else's life or you kind of take that, taking them on a detour. Now they have to go around explaining, well, how these things are not true. You understand? When you didn't even provide any proof. It wasn't like you saying, listen, I don't know about this, but this is the evidence I have. If the evidence that I have is correct, this will be what, what it seems to be. And allow the person the opportunity, but you say like you know this. And if it was for myself, I probably would keep quiet. You understand? If it was for myself, I probably would keep quiet. And I probably would not even thought to say anything. You understand? Because, you know, mine and mine them. You understand? However, my, my, my wife, you understand? My sister wife, you understand? Someone, someone who I regard to be, um, I'll say, independently faithful to this truth. This is what God gave I and I this wife. You understand? And then you slander her name, too. You understand? And she has family and others. And, and you don't care about that. The only thing is, that it seems so in your eyes, or some informant gave you false and faulty information, or really gossip and slander. They never provide you no know, information. Yeah, you talk about, well, lying to Judah society, this and that, but do you really know the history of this, the real function of this? It's unique from the Ethiopian World Federation, yet it is similar in this sense to divine heritage and our ancient Ethiopian culture. You know what I'm saying? If you can see the big vision and the big picture, don't try to undermine it, you know what I'm saying? Undermine it by, you know, these sort of petty means and everything. You know what I'm saying? Because slander and lie, it erodes. It's like a cancer in a sense. You know what I'm saying? And when we look at the Rastafari community, more of it is because of hearsay and she say, other than the word of his majesty. You mean we have as much time for hearsay and she say and unverified allegations? That's a crime against humanity, not in the UN site, but in Jah site. You know what I'm saying? So that means that it will come up. You know what I'm saying? It will come up for arbitration. It will come up for judgment. This is why the word says repent. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I'm not even really angry about it because this is what? I mean, you're not even helping me if I really did something. I can't even see what it is. You, you're saying this and that and, and just based on what people tell you, so forth and so on, but yet you put this out there that when I and other members of the society and the family and whoever wants to work with I and I for the benefit of, not I personally, but the benefit of all of I and I, do you know what you're doing to the work of His Majesty? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you really need to, but no weapon, no weapon that's formed against I and I shall prosper. You know what I'm saying? And every tongue that shall rise up in the judgment, you know what I'm saying? He says, I and I will condemn. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the what? Heritage. You know what I'm saying? The heritage of the servants of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? You know that word, or you should know that word, or you heard that word, or search out that word and find that word for yourself. All things work towards the good of those who what? Love Jah, who love the Lord.